do. I'll now call this uh, regular council meeting to order. Uh, you have a copy of the agenda for the meeting at your places. Uh, and I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So we'll move. In discussion. Here, not all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Next, we have uh, minutes from the November 20th, 2018 workshop uh, and a regular meeting on November 20th, 2018. And we have one consent item. Uh, we obtain a motion to adopt. So, so moved. Second. Discussion? Carried out all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> So we have uh, two items uh, for discussion tonight, and it'll be uh, the auditor's report and a report on hurricane storage. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Woodruff, and you can introduce the auditor. Thank evening. you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. This evening, we'd like to talk with you about the auditor's report and then have phase two of the Hurricane Florence report. Because of a special presentation in the City Council Chamber at 6 o'clock, what we'd like to do wherever we are in the, I think, the Hurricane Florence reports, we'll try to stop about 10 minutes till 6 so that we can then reconvene in the City Council Chambers. As you know, for many years, we've been fortunate to have extremely good audits, and the auditing firm, while it has changed names, has actually been the same auditing firm. And tonight, we're, we're pleased to have Linda with us, who's going to give you an overview. I know that each of you have a copy of the audit with you. You may not have had an opportunity to read all of the pages and all of the numbers. So therefore, Linda is certainly available by phone or to come to individual meetings after the overall presentation tonight. At this time, Linda and Gail, I'll turn the audit presentation over to you. Okay, this is just the agenda of this report, and we'll first go over the results of the financial audit. Okay, we issued an unmodified clean opinion on the basic financial statements, and this is your report. It was prepared by finance. And all we did was issue an opinion on the report it was prepared. The audit went, we, it went as, excuse me, the audit went well. We started our planning back in May and we did not have to change our audit plan because all of our test of controls produced no adverse results. We tested we tested revenue, expenses, payroll, the debt and cash cycles, and they did not produce any adverse results. And so we kept our original audit plan. The risk that that we have to the risk of revenue are that they are overstated or not recorded in the proper period. So we did a test of controls of the water and sewer, the solid waste, and the stormwater fund revenues, and they were all recorded correctly. We reviewed the revenue and the receipt of the funds processes. We went through all of those and tested them to make sure that all the revenues were recorded correctly. We did substantive tests of, of the revenues. That is where we actually look at deposits, correspondence from the grantor agencies, and we confirmed all material revenue balances, either with the grantors or other sources. The expenditures and expenses, we did test the controls with a, a, for those, and we did <coughs> analytics after that to make sure that the variances between years was reasonable and that they were according to the budget. Uh, we also did the payroll process where we tested a sample of payroll and the internal controls to make sure that they were operating properly. We 
we also did a um, single audit, and that's where we tested transit and we tested Powellville, and we did not have any findings on either of those programs because we did have a couple last year, and all of that was resolved. Okay, um, a control deficiency that exists when the design of the internal control does not operate in a timely manner that finance or will find it. And a significant control deficiency is, um, is less severe than a material weakness, but it is important enough to merit attention. And we did not have it find any significant control deficiencies. Uh, material weakness is a significant deficiency or a combination of significant deficiencies in internal control where it is possible that revenue or expenditures can be misstated and the financial statements will be misstated. And we did not find any material weaknesses. We did have Actually, it says two control deficiencies, but we only had one because in the final review, the final reviewer decided that one of them was insignificant and to remove it. So the only one we had was where we found one invoice that had not been marked paid. And we told finance about that. And that was the missing paid stamp on, a, on a accounts payable. And the other one was the, that the department decided was insignificant. That was the calculation of the other post-employment benefits because the city implemented GASB 75 and there was a prior period adjustment to adjust the beginning liability to what it should be actuarially determined by the actuary. And if you look in your financial statements, you'll see that there are prior period adjustments, and that is just the OPEP liability. Okay. And do you have any questions about the report? Well, I don't know that you've had an opportunity to really study the report. I think the overall analysis, though, uh, is that you have found this to be what we would call a clean audit, Correct. that there are no substantial issues. But if you don't want to go through the whole report, the best part to go through is the management discussion and analysis, because that is a brief synopsis of the revenues, expenditures, expenses. It also has the... Um, debt, capital assets, and it starts on page, it starts on page 28. And this, if you read this, this is a very good synopsis of the whole audit report. You know, page 31 is the um, city's net position, which is the assets minus the liabilities. And on page 33 is the changes in net position. Page 40 is the capital assets, and 41 is the outstanding debt. And if you look at the slides now, this is the um, this is the revenues for the governmental activities. You can see at the bottom, there's the charges of services, the operating grants and capital grants. And you can see those for um, how the charges for services and the capital grants have been basically about the same. 
and the operating grants is just there's some fluctuation in those by year. And this is the business type revenues, and those have been looks like more or less like steady for the last few years. <clears throat> There. Okay. And this is your general fund balance, and you can see it for the last three years. And this is, let me see what's the rest of that. Okay. This one is the um, fund balance unassigned as the percentage of general fund net expenditures and you'll see there's the cities and these are similar sizes in the middle and there's the statewide and we actually get this information from the um, local government commission and they put out reports and you can they have all kinds of analysis like for water and sewer operations and they have a lot of good information in those Okay, this is the 114 letter and it is required report that is that has to be given to the city council every year. And it came about as because of the failings of Enron and other audits <coughs> that if potentially the board had to have known if the auditor had met with the board over beforehand that maybe some of those could have been prevented. Okay, and you see there that the city adopted GASB 3075, and the other ones were insignificant. Okay, and we did not identify any significant or unusual transactions or accounting policies that were, in, that were controversial. We did not discuss with management any alternative treatments with GAP. And we determined that all of management's judgments and accounting estimates were reasonable. We did not propose any audit adjustments to the original trial balance. And the only uncorrected misstatement was something that was insignificant, and that was with the beginning balance of the OPEB liability, the prior period adjustment. And we didn't have any disagreements with management over the adoption of significant accounting type principles. And there were no significant issues arising from the audit. And we did not significant we did not encounter encounter any significant difficulties in dealing with management. And these are the ones that you've already seen. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. You know, Gail and her staff are the heavy lifters on the on the audit, just as they are on the budget. Uh, I think that it certainly reflects well on you as a council. Uh, it reflects well on every department because the budget is understood. The department heads understand they have to work within the budget as adopted. And that's why when you come to an audit like this and you find that there are really no issues, it's because your staff understands the policies that you've established and they follow those policies. Every supervisor, every administrative assistant is trained on a regular basis to make sure they understand how our budget works. And speaking of budgets, it's hard to believe, but tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we will have our first kickoff meeting with the department heads to begin once again to talk about the budget for the coming year. What I would encourage you to do is over the next several weeks as you're eating homemade fudge and pizza, 
Easy. Maybe not in that great order. <laughs> it's a great combination. Uh, I would suggest that you go through this in detail and contact Gail with specific questions. One of the things that I want, I do want to point out, though, is your your situation with your fund balance of the general fund. It has been your goal to have 10 percent of the whatever the general fund budget is. So let's say the general fund is 50 million dollars. It's been your goal to have a 10 percent unrestricted, meaning cash available to spend, a general fund reserve. As you've seen tonight, you actually have about 40 percent. Some citizens may say, well, then they ought to cut taxes. Well, others will say, when are we going to get our FEMA money? You will learn in a few minutes that we have spent about six million dollars on FEMA recovery. That's money that are on hurricane recovery. That's money that the city has to front. And therefore, it won't be next week when FEMA mails us that check. It will come in in increments, and it may be several years. So that's, again, one of the good reasons that your policy is in place. You will recall four or five budgets ago, the general fund balance was only at about 12 or 14 percent. Through your excellent budgeting and through the department's excellent adherence to the budgeting and spending policies, we have been able to build that reserve. And I, I think that's something you should be very proud of. Thank you. Gail, any <clears throat> comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, and we usually tell clients when we present the audit sometimes about the fund balance because we still have audit clients that are still receiving money from Hurricane Matthew two years ago. All right. And they had to spend all of that money out for it. And it takes sometimes years to get it, and you're correct. The last comment that I would have is what we always ask you. Has any member of the management or staff of the city in any way tried to influence your decisions in this audit? No. Has any member of management or the staff asked you to change any of the data that you're presenting tonight? No. Thank you. Yes, sir. John, do you have questions? No, just we need uh, council to accept the, the R. Okay. I would entertain a motion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion among the council? Are we all. moving to approve it or accept, accept it? it. Accept, accept, it. Accept, accept the report. Accept the report. Yes. If there's no other discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And I'll, and I'll leave y'all to discuss broken points. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'd like to resume the report to you on Hurricane Florence. I'm going to ask Alan Baker to come up. He's going to begin with uh, issues relative to damage to city buildings. Again, we may not uh, finish this this evening, which is fine. Fortunately, the hurricane is over. But we do want to make sure they have an opportunity to really uh, update you. So, Alan, if you would. Good evening, Mayor and Council. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. I'm going to just give you an overview of um, our major majorly damaged buildings. Um, I can say that uh, the city fared very well through the hurricane on most of the buildings. So uh, this is just gonna be a short description of some of the worst ones. Um, so this is one of the rec recreation buildings, which was, was, was the worst one. Uh, it had extensive roof damage, interior water damage, Gym floor was destroyed, air conditioning duct work, ceiling tiles in the floor. As you can see, the entire membrane came off the gym portion. When it came off, it actually took some of the structural members on the back side and threw them on this front, on the front portion of Jack M. It, which damaged that roof also. Uh, I believe y'all have seen some pictures of this in the past. Um, so that's pretty much what it looked like when we, we, we came up to it. Also, this is the front portion where the, uh, the the roof was damaged, ceiling tiles, and this is where most of the ductwork is located. Um, it had about a half inch of water in there. 
A lot of it came from the roof, and uh, uh, I think a majority of it came from the gym itself. Train Depot was another one. Uh, pretty much the same thing, the roof damage and the interior water. Um, around the outside of the walls, the water <coughs> came in through the damaged roof and came down the walls and also got into the floor. See, we have the tarps over the, the areas that were damaged. This is some of the issues on the inside. This was in the very back room. In the River Oak Marina, um, it was completely flooded. It had over 36 inches in there. Uh, you all have seen some pictures of this too. But um, with the water, it also had around an inch or two of mud that came in with it. <clears throat> you can see there. Yeah. More, uh, more mud. <clears throat> the main pump station also had roof damage. Um, seemed like the main pump station took a beating through the entire storm in different locations, generators, and um, all kinds of stuff. So um, there is the uh, damage where the locations where it was. It, it pretty much took off a quarter of the shingles on this building. <clears throat> this is what the guys had to tend to as far as cleaning up the uh, debris on the inside and trying to keep the, the station going at the same time. Uh, several park buildings were damaged. Um, picnic shelters, concession stands, um, ball field dugouts, we had one completely gone. And, but we, we did have a lot of smaller repairs that we've we, we've taken care of so far. Now, this is one of the shelters there at the Commons. It took off about every one of the shingles on this side of it. The other side is, is untouched. Um, this here is one of them at the, uh, this is the Phillips Park shelter. It got over the electrical panel there. This here is back at the Commons, the concession stand. It had um, shingle damage on about every side of this concession stand. And there was uh, two other buildings at this location too that had shingle damage that are on these slides. Sturgeon City Learning Center, which is the, the, um, the old sanitation building that the Sturgeon City folks are using at the moment. It had shingle damage um, on this one side but it did have some on the other side also, and it got in on some of this, the, the sheetrock and insulation, and we had to go in there and temporarily repair that so they could get back in there. Some of the issues um, around the seams of the sheetrock where the water had got in, and it, was, uh, it had started pulling the nails through the sheetrock. So we, went in, <clears throat> we had to go in there and take that down and temporarily patch that so they could get back in there. Center for Public Safety, it had uh, minimal damage. Um, it had a piece of flashing come off one of the, uh, the very high, the penthouse uh, knee wall up there. A piece of flashing came off and um, it blew all the way down the uh, second story portion of the roof and put about 20 holes in as it was going. So, so that's where it, um, that's where most of the leaks came from in this building. And there's that roof, it was about a 20 foot piece that blew off. And there was one of the holes that it did, it did that about 19 more times. <laughs> so uh, the, the, uh, the EOC was operational and all the water leaks that was happening, that's where most of them were coming from, from, from this damage here. Um, in the recovery, we are, we've got probably 60% of our smaller projects done and we're still finding things as, as we go. Um, we do have uh, uh, stuff, things in order to um, get the bigger projects going. We have some architects involved and um, we're working on 
to get those repaired. Um, we did bid out the roofing and didn't get no bids back. So I think we're going to try to do what we can in house and uh, try to, to just bid out a smaller portion on it. See how that goes. Anything you have to say about that? Well, the one thing I, one thing I would say is, is this. Uh, you know, Alan and his people were just like all the other city employees during the storm. Uh, they, they were attacking the issues as they occurred. Many of our buildings would have been damaged to a higher degree if they had not been on call and had been out there during the storm, and they are really to be commended. The other thing that we are finding is that all of our capital projects right now are coming in with numbers that we simply are rejecting. So unless it's an emergency, your capital improvement plan for this year is simply placed on hold for two reasons. Number one, the prices that we're seeing from the construction industry right now are just through the roof. For example, <coughs> last year we looked at removing uh, the asbestos from the Sturgeon City buildings. <coughs> And the cost that we were expecting was sixty to eighty thousand dollars. We got one bid in two hundred thousand dollars. Just simply not going to do that. We're just going to simply postpone a lot of these things. So when you look at your CIP, uh, you will find in water and sewer that because of the significant number of manholes that sunk or lines that got blown out many of your CIP projects in water and sewer are going to be postponed until next year because we're going to have to redirect that money into repairing these existing systems. The same thing, let's use, for example, uh, the uh, old fire station two on Barn Street. <coughs> Y'all have approved about $170,000 to convert that into a recreation aerobic center. We're simply not going to advertise that at this time because we believe that all trends show that we're not going to get a bid anywhere close to what the money is that we have budgeted. And of course, the other part is this. We have to find money to repair the buildings that we already have. So you will be finding that through Gale and through your amendments, there'll be money that we will be redirecting to address the needs of repairing your buildings. But again, Alan, you and your personnel really did a good job. I commend you. Where do we stand on insurance? The insurance claims have been filed at this point. We're like many others. Uh, it took weeks, even though we're with the league, it took weeks for us to get the league adjuster down here. I believe the league adjuster came Thanksgiving week, I think was when they came. And then you can see how far behind they are with, with others. At this point, we have not had any of our claims finalized. We are just now, uh, it was only last week that we had our FEMA person specifically assigned to handle our claims. So it will be uh, something that we will keep you updated on. Do you have any other questions about the buildings? Thank you. All right, thank you. Very quickly, let's talk about our hurricane debris. I think, Kerry, you're going to yes. do this? I think you're aware that Kerry is not only the, de the Deputy Public Services Director, he's also a model for GQ magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a model, I'm bleeding. Um, thank you very much, Mayor and Council, for allowing us to come and uh, just give you an overview of the collection efforts on the hurricane debris removal. <clears throat> As you can see, um, prior to the hurricane, uh, the city of Jacksonville mobilized uh, four businesses in order to, to come in and take care of the debris removal. Two of those businesses, uh, Crowder Gulf and Thompson Consulting. Uh, Thompson Consulting is the monitoring company, uh, and what the monitoring company does is verify the information of the, the materials that are collected by the <clears throat> debris hauling company to so that we can forward that information to FEMA to get reimbursed. Um, the vegetative landfill and the C&D disposal, those are Two businesses that, number one, recycle the vegetation through mulching after we've mulched it up. And the C&D disposal, uh, greens recycling, they take the C&D and recycle that also. Um, again, uh, Thompson's Consulting, uh, that's the monitoring company. And I think you guys have, have seen the big machine and the guys come and check it out. 
Uh, primarily what they do is they take care of the debris removal site and, and, and manage the debris removal site. They make sure of the documentation so that we can get proper information to FEMA so that we can be reimbursed. They track the origin of the materials. Uh, and you'll see in the next slide where they have a very sophisticated ticket uh, where they monitor where the materials come from, from that to the disposal site or the management site, and then to the disposal site, which is, in my opinion, is very sophisticated. Um, again, here is the, the ticket that each load that's, that's deposited into the debris uh, management site. Uh, if you'll see down at the quantity, where it says quantity, uh, it shows the contractor, it shows the load, it shows the capacity of the, the vehicle that brought it in, it shows what type of material is there, and this information uh, you know, is going to be very helpful uh, to, to FEMA when we look to get reimbursed. I think, uh, and I'll say this, I think Wally had mentioned to me that Thompson Consulting has a very good um, track record with recovering monies from FEMA uh, through, through the debris removal process. Uh, at present, uh, the vegetative material, these are old slides, and I'm sure that the 260,000 cubic yards of debris is significantly more. And I think uh, a lot of you have seen uh, the trucks drive around the town and what they've been hauling. We're in the last phase of our hauling. Uh, in fact, uh, they're doing some uh, minor cleanup of the, the area now of the, the addresses that we gave them on last November 26th. So within the next week, they, they should be out of the area here. Um, over 260,000 cubic yards of, of vegetation have been hauled to site. Uh, they have been chipped up uh, to reduce to 65,000 cubic yards and taken to Morton's in order for Morton's to recycle that material. Um, the construction and demolition debris uh, that has been taken uh, to Maysville, to Greens Recycling, I think it is. And um, that material is also recycled. Uh, the, the slide shows that over 2,600 tons of sea and debris have been removed. Um, I've driven around town uh, the last couple of days, and it, it seems like there was a lot of material out before. It seems like there's a lot more material out now uh, as far as the uh, residents are concerned. I think part of that is uh, what we've mentioned before earlier about the lateness of adjusters getting out to these locations trying to to get to everyone in a timely manner. This figure, this is debris removal cost, and if you can see it's, it's, it's in my opinion, significant. Uh, these are preliminary estimates. All the figures have not come in yet as far as the cost is concerned, but I think this is the minimum that it will be. Uh, it could be more based on the, the, the last week that the contractors are in here taking care of the debris. Um, I think the debris removal program that we started, that the city initiated with the, the businesses, uh, in my 26 years have been the best it's ever been as far as smoothness is concerned. Uh, Dr. Wood have complimented the employees. I think the employees should be complimented. Uh, the day after the storm, or day or two after the storm, uh, city crews were out cleaning the streets uh, in order for, you know, Crowder Gulf and, and the other companies to come in and, and successfully remove this material. So it's, it's really kudos to everyone involved in this um, operation and uh, also kudos to, uh, and we don't mention this enough, kudos to Wally Hanson because Wally kind of steer, steer, steered this in the right direction. So I think he should be given some kudos too. Uh, it was handled very smoothly. Council, at this point, uh, I think given the hour, uh, we will conclude this phase. I would like to stress that while trucks are still out there, people should not be putting out any more material. You know, from our perspective, uh, you have if you don't have it out there yet, you have passed the point of putting it out there. There will come a point uh, where the last FEMA truck, Crowder Gulf truck, will be leaving the city. That's going to be uh, possibly late this week, possibly the middle of next week. The rains have not helped. You have seen the site uh, across from the Center for Public Safety. Uh, there is no chipping going on right now because the site is just literally a mud hole. So we're waiting for things to dry out. We do appreciate the cooperation that the public has given, but we also stress to the public 
if it is not in your front yard as of this past Monday, don't put it out there. What we do know is there are locations in the city, as well as what we know in the county, that people are bringing things in from other counties. They're bringing things in from outside the city and deposited in the city. And when the police department, when we are able to document that, the police department will be charging you with illegal dumping. So we're serious. Our collection process is ending. That means that our normal processes of charging for large loads will be beginning shortly. Any questions for Kerry? He and the staff have done an excellent job of cleaning the city. Any questions you have for them? I understand the situation you're in, but as we heard, there are some people still waiting on adjustments, damage claims, and work to start. They're going to result in some construction debris. Um, are you saying that we're going to have to charge people for that? Yes, sir, and let me address that this way. Almost all of those are insurance claims. The insurance claim has a deductible. That deductible is the same whether it's a $5,000 charge for putting on a roof or a $5,000 charge for putting on a roof and another $800 for sending it to the landfill. And we just want to remind people that, you know, the free period, uh, I'm sure we're going to have to, to look at this with some exceptions, but where insurance is involved, that deductible is the same regardless of whether the city's hauling it off or whether the contractor is hauling it off. And I will say to you, there are many locations that we've seen where we think the contractors have taken advantage of the free service. But uh, Mr. Bittner, I understand your, your point and uh, we will try to be flexible with people. But we do seek guidance from y'all on those issues. I think you made the appropriate decision. Sure we you know, if somebody calls us, we'll we'll be calling you. Let, let me ask you this: Are, you know, after the um, contractor is gone, and we're picking it up with our people, are we get are we going to be able to obtain any kind of reimbursement from FEMA for what we dump in the landfill? No, 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 no. So that would be done for. We will begin phase three of this report in January. And hopefully between now and then we won't have any snowstorms. <laughs> Can we adjourn? Not adjourn. Recess. We're going to take, we're going to take a recess uh, and we're going to go into the council chambers after, after, after the recess. After the recess. And then.
All right, we're going to go back into session. We've been in recess and we just changed rooms, so we, we're back in here now. Uh, okay, uh, we do have a presentation we would like to make this night uh, tonight, and I would like to ask Pastor Chris Phillips if he would join me up front, along with your parishioners that you've brought with you. Now this this is Mrs. This Mrs. is Chris. This is my wife, Miriam. Very nice to meet you. How's everybody doing? Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, good to see you here. It's just just a small representation yes, of your small. of your Very small. church. Very small. But since 2006, the River Life Church has generous, generously made an annual donation to the city. This donation assists the Recreation and Parks Department in providing scholarships to children for recreation programs such as summer camps, after-school programs, and youth sports. So, at this time, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And on behalf of uh, River of Life Church, we are here once again to present a check for $10,000. And I'm going to pull that out. I don't have the fake check this year. We didn't get one of those printed. But I do have the real thing. And you can take a look at that and make sure that that's signed and that that is... Uh, this will be easier to get into drive Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I'm only here on behalf of the church as uh, the person who's delivering this. None of this would be possible without the super generosity of all of the members of River of Life Church. And so it's on their behalf that we present this to you. And we want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing the value and the importance of the local church in our community. Uh, city council members, uh, we want to thank you as well because uh, this, the local church is so important and you work with the pastors here and the churches all across the city uh, to make this a blessed community and we really appreciate that. And so on behalf of our church and uh, then I know I speak for all of the other uh, spiritual leaders in our community, we just want to thank you and bless you and bless our city and wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and blessed New Year. Amen. Amen. Mr. Mayor. We're very, we're very blessed uh, by, by your contribution here. This is, this is wonderful, and this will go a long ways for us. And uh, one thing I would like to do here is, first off, I'm going to present you with this plaque here that you can put it, hopefully, put in your new church uh, pretty soon. Yes. And I, I got one better than that for you. All right. If y'all right. bear with me for a minute, okay. I would like to ask uh, uh, Melanie uh, Marzette from Rock Recreation uh, Department and some of her guests here. They're going to make a little presentation to you here tonight. Aww. So you can see a little bit about where your, uh, your blessing to us goes. Yeah. All right. Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. Something that they uh, did over the summer. Um, and wanted to show uh, you their appreciation. Um, these are just some of the kids that were able to participate in the enrichment program. Um, on a personal note, and through recreation and parks, I'd like to thank you. Um, you touch lives every summer, and you're actually you. saving lives. This gives them a place mm -hmm. to go, to learn, and also um, <coughs> and so enjoy some fun activities over the summer. So Amen. thank Amen. you from the bottom of our hearts. Oh, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? That's sweet, huh? Oh, yes, it is. Very sweet. <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> I'm going to get y'all with this picture. Awesome. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me thank you one more time, all of you, for your generous contribution to, to, to the city. Again, to go towards programs such as our children here tonight that presented you with this banner that they, I'm sure they put a lot of work into. But uh, bless you all, and uh, I hope hopefully you have a, a wonderful Christmas and, and uh, a prosperous new year and quickly into your church. Amen. <laughs>
to all those out there, and I would like to say Merry Christmas and continue to help those that have been um, devastated by the storm and just continue to be a loving community, and we look forward to next year. Thank you, Brian. Mr. Bittner. Yes, Mayor. Mayor, I, I don't have a particular report, but I can't help but reflect upon as we approach the holiday season that we've this community has come through a particularly tough time with Hurricane Florence. And thank goodness we have a city organization that knew how to respond and did respond with full resources in terms of helping people. And not only that, our community itself, people responded by turning out assistance to those in need and proved, their, and proved our true mettle as a community of people and of a city organization and of a real uh, generos generosity type community. And I just hope that spirit of giving continues through the holidays and throughout the upcoming new year. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Mayor Partemo is on. Mayor, um, had the honor of attending the Goals Conference on uh, the 29th with uh, Council Member Jackson and Dr. Richard Woodruff. Um, in Raleigh, uh, we had over 175 cities to attend, and we together narrowed down 33 legislative goals down to 15, which I believe Dr. Woodruff sent to everyone. Uh, that were adopted uh, for the upcoming biennium session. So uh, just get a chance. Please read those, and, and that's what we'll be going forward to your uh, legislative body for, for goals for this, uh, for this session. And just Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and a Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I went last Thursday night for the grand opening or the tour of the new Zimzum Children's oh, yeah. Museum, and I was just thoroughly impressed by what I saw. Uh, there's been a lot of work put into it by uh, some very dedicated people, that, uh, you know, former teachers uh, who did a great job. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to go by there and take a look at it, it's, it's worth the trip because, uh, like, I, like I told them, I was just, I was just taken, you know, by surprise how well, you know, how well that looked. Uh, it's going to be a, a good little, uh, good asset here for us to have here in our city, you know, for people to go. It's more or less a, a place where kids can go and, and have a good time and get busy. So, we're very nice. Uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m., uh, we have the Tree of Hope uh, at the uh, Oslo Memorial Hospital. Uh, encourage, you know, people to attend. And going back to what? We we're talking about with the storm and all the things that we've seen this year. I think we're very blessed as a city. Uh, we uh, we we had a tough time. Uh, it was a it was a terrible storm. Uh, we've never seen anything like that really here before. But you know we're strong. We're a strong community, and we have risen above all that. And I think we're back to normal now. And. Uh, it's getting cleaner and, and better, and uh, I think that we're, uh, again, I think a lot of that has to go to our employees, the people that actually get out there and do the work day to day, and they were very uh, dedicated. And there's a lot of folks that are that really uh, have gotten out there and helped people on their own, you know, by helping cleaning yards up. Yards up, yards up, yards up, yards up, yards up, yards up. Oh, wow. That didn't sound good. Anyway, but uh, we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of our, our employees volunteer to go out and, and help, you know, which is above and beyond. But uh, that's what community is all about. And that's why we're such a great city. Dr. Wood. Several things uh, this evening. First of all, we would like to remind the public that at 7 o'clock this evening, we will have the official tree lighting down at Riverwalk Park. And I would encourage you, if you're home and you just simply want to get out of the house, Come down to Riverwalk Park any day between now and Christmas. Michael Aquari and the parks crews have done an outstanding job of decorating. And when you go down there tonight for the tree lighting, I think you're going to be truly impressed. We probably have 100,000 lights that the city has put out downtown. I'm not talking about the candy canes along the roads. I'm talking about just at Riverwalk Park. 
So I hope that you will come out uh, you know, over the next several days, uh, bring your family, walk the park, and really enjoy the beauty that the city council has provided for the community. Uh, in reviewing the one minute, the one city moment tonight, there are several things we'd like to reflect on. The first is appreciation to the police department. The Jacksonville Police Department have recognized crosswalk, would like to recognize Crossroads Church for what they do for the police department. They have their church on Center Street near where the holiday parade ends. Their parking lot has become the location where the police debrief after the parade. And this year, the church even fed the police officers <coughs> after the event. That is truly one city, and they are to truly be commended. And we have a little video we'd like to play of that. So please roll that. The last thing that people see in the parade are the police cars coming down Western Boulevard and, and that allows us to open up Western Boulevard in a very safe and effective manner. So as we're moving down Western Boulevard, the idea is, is that we bring every car in as we open up those intersections and we use those cars to make sure that the folks are safe as, as the parade uh, finishes. So at the end of the parade, one of the things that we do is we plan for next year. So we've been using the church parking lot for a number of years to have a debriefing. So as, as the officers finish the, the parade, they pull into that parking lot and then we have a debriefing. What went good, what went bad, what things do we need to improve for next year? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for our great church. Thank you for our community. Thank you for law enforcement and public servants, Lord, that keep our community safe and things running smoothly. And uh, going on in the background, they rarely get thanked, mostly just get griped about. And Lord, tonight we want to thank them. Keep them safe, uh, their families safe, Lord. And we just are uh, so thankful for them being part of our lives, part of our community. Lord, bless this food and all the students here tonight receiving ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. On uh, Thanksgiving and also the uh, Veterans Day Parade and the, and the Holiday Parade a few weeks after that, that uh, over our, uh, the last few years we've developed kind of a uh, tradition here of feeding the officers and helping them as they do their final, I want to say debrief, but it's briefing or what's the actual? You got to debrief. Debrief. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so they have the debrief, which I knew that all along, out in the, uh, our parking lot. And so it started many, many years ago to say, hey, can we use your parking lot? And, and uh, so we said, sure, we, nobody, we weren't even here. Doors were locked, they just used our parking lot so the officers could, could, uh, could have a debriefing about the parade event, how things went, all that, and then they left. And so as the years rolled on, uh, many of you here uh, that were a part of it, we decided, hey, what if we have uh, just some coffee out there or something? And a lot of the North Indians restrooms, water bottles, and uh, has just kept going and going, and just a passion for, uh, for helping them, helping our community. So we, uh, we, we want to give, uh, give them honor, and it turned into a full-blown uh, Thanksgiving dinner, basically, where they come in and eat and really take a minute to relax and, and just get celebrated. And, and so once the chief uh, you know, was here and found out about that, he asked if he could just come in and speak to y'all and address uh, you tonight personally. Uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do that. Can you give the chief a big hand to tell us tonight? We want the whole community to know what an act of kindness that, you, that you've given to us. What a gift. You know, it, it's not every day that people appreciate what police do. And for you all to do that out of the, out of the goodness of your heart, just, just seeing the officers there and saying, this is such a, uh, you know, it's such a great uh, gesture. Because the officers do, they, they work there, they get there about 7.30, 8 o'clock, and they're there until about noon. And they're on their feet, they don't have much, much to eat, much to drink, because they're, you know, they're, they're directing traffic, they're answering questions, they're making sure that everything's secure. And just to come here and to have some time of fellowship and to see what, what kind of love that you, that you bestowed upon them was really, uh, was really a, a true blessing for me. And I know for these officers that were there, it was for them too. And I know that, that now they, they look forward to you, uh, to you 
taken care of them. So, I, uh, you know, it's not much, but uh, on, on behalf of the police department, I, I, we have a small token oh, wow. just, just to thank you and, to, and for you to, to be able to say, hey, look, this is, uh, you know, we appreciate the, the effort that you made for us. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of time. The food was great. <laughs> and, you know, I, I know that every one of those officers appreciate the effort that you did. What an act of kindness. I can't, I can't say enough great things about you. And we appreciate you just taking that time. So, that's all right. Thank you. Well, I, I have three other. Uh, well, you got a list. On, one, got on, one, on one city moments, we we have a number of this. Uh, Winterfest. Uh, obviously, Saturday was not the uh, sunniest day in the uh, calendar. We probably had about 1,500 people who did come down for Winterfest. But as you know, uh, the crowd. This is an event that the mayor and council fund that is totally free. I know when uh, our grandson, he and I were standing in line to do the climbing wall that uh, a lady behind us said, well, where do you buy the tickets for this? And she had no idea who I was, and I certainly didn't introduce myself, but I turned around and said, well, it's all free. And she said, what do you, what do you mean it's free? I said, well, the city believes in returning to the community free events, and this is one of the three free events a year. And she and her children, uh, they went up and down the climbing wall many times, Unfortunately, the rain did come and it caused us to have to uh, close early. The other part of the festival that was a roaring success was what happened up at the Commons in the gym, and that was the craft show. We've had people say that uh, the Christmas gifts that they bought up there were truly unique and that they were handmade, that they really look forward to the craft show every year. And I know the number of vendors are really beginning to stack up because so many citizens come and buy their Christmas gifts there. Had tremendous volunteers. You know, the young Marines in this community really come out. It doesn't matter whether it's to remove hurricane debris or whether it's for something like the uh, a 5K or whether it's the Winterfest. I want to show you, when it comes to Winterfest, I want to tell you a little bit about this picture. The young gentleman that you see there in the red uh, got up to the top, and when he looked down, he began to hesitate as to whether he wanted to go down. So he said to one of the attendants there, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I want to do this. Well, one of the Marines who was standing there said, come on, young man, hop in here with me. That's a Marine who did not even know this young man until he heard that. The young Marine got in the saucer, the young man got in his lap, and down they went. And they had a great time. And that's truly what this city is about. One city working together. We are truly blessed. And with that, we wish all of y'all a Merry Christmas and appreciate the leadership you provide. And this is, of course, the flotilla. Uh, in a minute, you're going to... Uh, no, that's not, that's not the city manager in the Grinch outfit. But uh, you can see the beauty uh, while the... And this one, by the way, is the city's float from Stormwater. You can see the oyster there, yeah. and that's the city's pontoon boat and members, Pat and her crew out there uh, participating. But a great event, and we do thank you, Council, for supporting this and providing the funds. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mr. Carter. Just wish everyone Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Mary Council. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn, so and we're going to go light a Christmas tree. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're going to eat first.